Forsook you, O Lord, and came into this world of pain and sorrow. Now I submit my tale of woe at your lotus feet. While still in the unbearable fetters of my mother's womb, I saw you before me. You revealed yourself, but briefly, and then abandoned this poor servant of yours. At that moment, I swore to worship you after taking birth, but birth came. And with it, the network of worldly illusion which robbed me of all good sense. As a fondled son in the lap of relatives, I passed my time smiling and laughing. My parents' affection helped me to forget the pangs of birth, and I thought the world was very nice. Day by day, I grew and soon began playing with the other boys. Totally, my powers of understanding emerged. I read and studied my lessons incessantly. Traveling from place to place, Proud of my education, I grew wealthy and maintained my family with undivided attention. Oh Lord Hari, I forget you. 
Now in old age, Bhakti Vinoda is sad. He weeps. I fail to worship you, O Lord, and instead pass my life in vain. What will be my fate now? Hari. So such a wonderful version. Where uh, it is a what the mood we should all get get because as we in the last session we have seen that without feeling this uh, discomfort in this material world we don't feel discomfort in this material world we cannot remember krishna so bhakti vinod thakur says that one one should show how how one how should one show discomfort in this material world we are all happy busy playing our childhood games enjoying the company of our parents relatives spouse etc and forgot the supreme personality of godhead it is only the forgetful of supreme personality of godhead that made us come to this material world of suffering and perish ओम ज्ञान तिमिरांदस्यज्ञानांजनाशलाज्ञानचक्षुरन्मिलितम्येनाश्मैशीगुरवेनमहाश्रीचैतन्यमनोभीष्टंस्थापितम्येनाभूतलेस्वयंरू
Hare Krishna Prabhu Dandu Pranam. By your, by all of your blessings, let us start this today's session. We will continue yesterday's session of three dot twenty five. Where is the Kapila Muni says the glories of the devotional service to Devahuti. So just a brief recap of what we have seen, what we have read uh, listened yesterday. So Saunaka the Rishis were very eager to hear about Lord Kapila's, Kapila's instructions. So this is the nature of a, a pure devotee. Pure devotee is always eager to hear the pastimes of Krishna. This is a this is a barometer where we can test whether I am progressing in Krishna consciousness or not. Am I eager to hear Krishna's kada or not? We think we may think that yes, I have read this story before. Then we are not Krishna conscious. So just like uh, Saunaka Rishis are eager, one should be very eager to hear Krishna. So there were more, more glorification of the, the Lord Kapila was given. Then Devahuti puts her a question. Then says she, she is tired of her material senses. That she is tired of her all the material senses, and her whole, only hope is Kapila Dev. This is a mood of a spiritual master and a disciple. This is a relation between how Guru and the Sishya should have. So she asks Padila Muni to dispel her illusion of the false ego of identifying body and the soul as one. She took the shelter of only Lord Sri Krishna in the form of Kapila Muni. So then Kapila Muni starts answering the question in the form of Sankhya Yoga, Adhyatmika Yoga. So Adhyatma Yoga has the three limbs, Jnana, Bhakti and Ashtanga Yoga, which are very easy to, easy to follow. Just like we have seen the example of the uh, foolish monkey trying to enjoy the senses and gets trapped in the death of the hunter, one should be very eager to let go of something. We should not be like a foolish monkey to capture that enjoyment. We should let go of that enjoyment mentality which is possible only through Adhyatmika Yoga. The, the main impediment, main cause of this progress in spiritual life is our mind. Where the mind is engaged in a Maya conscious, it is causes bondage in the three modes of material nature. If our mind is engaged in Krishna service, this Krishna consciousness where we have seen what Govinda Dasa has said in the Pajahure Man. Then we have seen the Tag of War example where always Maya cheats us. He, he says we are all, we will always be happy in this material life, but it is not possible. After every happiness, material happiness, you will get material distress. So, one should clear his mind. So, the symptoms of the clear, clear liberated mind is, is free from karma and loba. The I, me and mine, we are free from this false designation. But what happens after this? The, the mind becomes pure and it can identify it itself clearly. Then how should a mind get attached? Then by following the nine, nine methods of devotion. Samana, Kirtana, Smarana, Vandana. So by, by Bhakti also. Endowed with Jnana and Vairagya. So then at that, when we have, when we start this Sadhana Bhakti itself, we will be in the Brahma Buddha Prasana. We will be in the Brahman platform where we are all happy. Peace. At that time, we can do the bhakti very easily. By following all the five four regulated principles, five limbs of the bhakti, even in this body, we can end the Brahma Buddha stage. Then Kapila Muni starts glorifying the bhakti, which is the only auspicious part. There is no other part. There is an example of a tree. See, if you see the big tree, if you want to cut the big tree, that we see it is cut into half. But after a few years, you can see some small sapling coming from the cut wood and slowly it becomes the big tree again. If you have the jnana and karma, it is cutting the tree at the half level. But to completely remove the tree, we have to remove the entire roots. Then only there is no chance of the tree growing. So bhakti removes this tree from the roots itself. So this tree is called the tree of birth and death, which is explained in the Bhagavad Gita 15th chapter. 
the inverted tree which you see the banyan tree the roots it's from the root itself bhakti alone can remove it so then if bhakti is there to whom should i give this bhakti to to whom i should render service it is the supreme personality of god that then what is the impediment what is stopping us from doing bhakti it is a materialistic association we are all attached to the materialistic tendencies the attachment of the soul cannot be killed so what is attachment if we love somebody what happens we love so much we see that person everywhere whether the person is here or not we try to remember that person as being present here that is what is attachment so material attachment we see in the form of loving exchange between the man and woman that the man falls deeply in love of the woman and he feels that woman is present everywhere there is a natural tendency of the soul to get attached to something you cannot say you should not you should not you should be detached you should do not have attachment but what we can do is we can have attachment towards krishna that is possible only when we have the association of the sadhus sadhu is a person who has unflinching devotion towards krishna he may not be very advanced there are three kinds of devotee the first class second class third class samadhikari madhyam adhikari and kanishtha adhikari the lowest class even the lowest class person is also called a sadhu because he has a conviction that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead krishna is should be taken shelter of sarva dharman parityajya bhagavatam shatram bhaja so what happens when we serve the materialistic association when the prabhupada explains rendering service to materialistic persons has the opposite effect if anyone offers service to the gross materialistic or a person engaged only in sense enjoyment then by association with such person the door to hell is open when we associate with materialistic person door to hell is open ullava manava janma satsangi so this is this body is rarely attained we should have satsanga association with the pure devotee so we should not expect a sadhu to instruct us in material prosperity not expect, go to a sadhu and get get blessing so that my materialistic uh, things get proved and instead he will give us instructions on how to cut the knot of contamination that is the motive of associating with a sadhu then only our bhakti gets started so where we start today we start from here the 21st shloka to 20, where the characteristics of a sadhu are given what are the characteristics of a sadhu what are the activities of a sadhu a sadhu in bhagavad gita is described as one who unflinchingly engages in the devotional service one should register service to the supreme personality of god that person is called a sadhu sometimes the sadhu may be falling this from his position due to his past tendencies so prabhupada says that today if you become a devotee that doesn't mean that you are a pious person in the previous life or in the previous you may be so much uh, impious just like brigari has become a devotee we might have a impious and impious uh, tendencies but because of the association of sadhu fortunately by his divine grace we are we are into the devotional path so it doesn't mean that one should have a previous pious like yes pious trip pious, pious is a good platform attachment to a devotee is attachment to the service of the lord because a sadhu will teach him how to become a devotee only a devotee only a sadhu can teach us how to become a devotee that's why after krishna he has given bhagavad gita and left this this world he felt that he has given instructions but he did not say how to follow it then he came in the form of a devotee called lord sri chaitanya mahaprabhu to show us how a devotee should hey how a devotee should execute devotional service so what are the second so in the 21st shloka the secondary characteristics of a sadhu are described titichavatharunika suhrutam sarvadehina 
अजाता शत्र वर्षांता साधवा साधु भूषणा the translation says the symptoms of a sadhu are that he is tolerant merciful and friendly to all the living entities he has no enemies he is peaceful he abides by the scriptures and all his characteristics are sublime so as you said a sadhu is a devotee of the lord he is not a, a person who has in uh, orange robes not every orange robe is a sadhu of course you can say they are in the process of a sadhu but the true sadhu is one who is a devotee of the lord whether he is in the brahmachari ashram grihastha ashram vanaprastha ashram or a sanyasi ashram whatever may be one in the in the varna system we have entire concept of varna ashram system was developed for the satisfaction of its wish from sibir hari gosh so when we follow according rules and regulations according, according to our varnashrama we want we are called a sadhu so what are the qualities of a sadhu is this he is karunika merciful why he is merciful because a devotee understands that this material world is full of miseries though you are getting some happiness this happiness is not going to last for eternity there is a distress coming over and people of this material world has forgot forgotten the beautiful path of bhakti beautiful loving service to krishna so he understands not only he understands he feels that the other person the relatives whatever area which he is seeing is unnecessarily wasting that that and durlabha manas so he is more merciful that instead of his liberation He is not bothered about his liberation, and he is thanks to the Lord. He does all the activities so that the entire world gets liberated. Just like an example of Sri Lanka Prabhupada, at the age of seventy, he has travelled to the west, which is which is unknown to him. He has left the comfortable position of Vrindavan and left for western countries. Why? But so that. we all can understand bhagavad gita and bhagavata it's for all of us because he is so merciful because he was so merciful we are getting the benefits of it outright yes sacrifice is comforts you can see the life of sri chaitanya mahaprabhu he has left a beautiful this is beautiful wife favorable wife a loving mother youth everything and took sanyas only for the sacrifice of only for the benefit of all of us so this is the nature of a devotee he is always merciful then he is tolerant titik shava why because in the in the process of sharing this krishna consciousness the share the process of sharing this knowledge a devotee has to undergo so many turbulences not everyone is going to accept easily so this this congregation is accepting the message very easily because we have to we have come to a particular location particular stage in the devotion but not everyone is going to accept this the process they confront us just like jesus christ jesus christ has come is an acharya who has come to say some good words then what is this what did these people do they crucified him so the other persons in the process of sharing this knowledge we come across so many turbulences it is we can get the personal attacks as well one should be very tolerant the sharing the the process of sharing the message we want to give this message to all but people are not ready to accept it we should be tolerant sarva dehi nam so he is merciful not only to human beings but to all the living entities because a sadhu sees every living entity as the part and parcel of krishna vasanti jinani yata vihaya so this body is like a dress one is have one living entity is wearing the dress of a human being one living entity is wearing the dress of a devata other living entity is wearing the dress of a dog or animal body this is the view of a sadhu so he is merciful to each and every living entity 
not only for the human beings. That is the qualification of Parishit Maharaj. He would have been satisfied with his own benefit, but he was not like that. He wanted everyone to get the bhakti and execute services. Not every human being, but every living entity. So, word praja means not the living human beings. It includes all dogs, animals, tigers, etc. That was the qualification of a Rajarishi or a Sadhu. Then he was friendly. A Sadhu is friendly because he behaves equally to all the living entities. There is no differentiation. He doesn't have any enemies. So what is the difference between, Prabhupada asks the question, what is the difference between an enemy and a friend? It is the only the difference in the behavior. The only the difference in the behavior. Enemy behaves for our negative effects. And the friend behaves for a positive reason. So a sadhu is always trying to elevate all of us. To bring from Ajnana to Jnana. So he is naturally the friend of all the living entities. A non-devotee, even though academically qualified, has no actual good qualifications. So if you see externally, a devotee, a sadhu, may not be qualified material enough. He might not be educated. But he, he should be considered the topmost because he has a faith in Krishna consciousness. A non-devotee, though he is having the highest qualification, highest material wealth, he is not considered to be a good person. So goodness means one who has yes, one who has unflinching faith in the Krishna consciousness, one who has these qualifications. And Kapil Ramani says, these are all secondary qualifications. A sadhu will necessarily will have all these things. It's a byproduct of executing devotional service. Even sometimes, materialistic people are also having these qualities. They are merciful, tolerance, sarvadehina, they are friendly. But these secondary characteristics alone doesn't suffice. Then Kapilamuni says, the primary qualification of a devotee, the first and foremost thing which you have, Mat Ashraya Kata Amrushta, Trunuvanti Katayanti Cha, Tapanti Vividas Tapa, Naitan Mat Gatas Chetasaha. Engaged constantly in the chanting and hearing about me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the sadhus do not suffer from material miseries because they are always filled with thoughts of my pastimes and activities. So what are the essential qualities of a sadhu? These are the primary qualities, whether he is seriously engaging in the service of the Lord, Krishna. How? Engaged constantly in chanting. Sorry, I think I skipped this sloka. My Ananya Bhavena Bhakti Purvanti E Dridam Mat Krita Kitva Karmanas Tiktiva Sajana Bandava. Such a sadhu engages in staunch devotional service to the Lord without deviation. For the sake of the Lord, he renounces all other connections, such as family relationships, friendly acquaintance within the world. Yes, Srila Prabhupada explains that a sannyasi is also called a sadhu. See the word also. Sannyasi is also means there are other sadhus as well. Yes, sannyasi is, should be considered to be a sadhu. So those who are following, following the Varnashram system should be considered to be a sadhu. And those who are having faith in Krishna, a sadhu. So for the devotional service, the sadhu engages in a staunch devotional service. For that service, he relinquishes all the comforts. Just like Srila Prabhupada, his disciples, and so many grihasthas as well. Not only the uh, sannyasis, there are so many grihasthas who has sacrificed their comforts for the sacrifice of Krishna. So who en seriously engages in the service of love, gives up all the responsibility only for the execution of the Lord. So a sannyasi we Leaves the comforts of the comforts and the pleasures of the Guruhastha. The family life, children life, 
all those things, they leave the because only for the service of his. But today, we see so many sannyasis in the Apasampradayas. Sampradayas has a bona fide sannyasi. But in Apasampradayas, we see so many sannyasis who has left this responsibility because they felt that this responsibility is very difficult to escape that responsibility of family life. Oh, I'm being tortured by my spouse. I'm tortured by my children. I don't have money. I did not complete my education. These are the reasons why people take sannyasa. And if this is the reason why we accept a sannyasa the ashrama, then Lord punishes us. It's only for our selfish benefit we have accepted the role of a sannyasa. But if you are accepting a sannyasa ashram only for the sacrifice, only for the, the enjoyment of Sri Krishna, then that is accepted. The entire Varnashrama Dharma is only for Samsiddhi Haritosh. We should not forget that. Ashrama. A is for I means Vishnu. Shama means, means uh, working. So Ashrama means working for only Krishna. So if we are not, if we are accepting Sanyasa Dharma without any proper knowledge, that Sanyasi is a burden to the society. So whatever we are doing, it should be just giving to that is the primary part. Krishna Ekahi Sharanam. Only service, only that we should take shelter of the Krishna. So then, what are the activities of the Sadhu? Matashre Katmar Amrusha, Sunavanti Katayanti Cha, Tapanti Vividas Tapa, Naitan Pantata Chetasaha. He is always engaged in hearing, chanting, and bhavai. Then one should, one, if one should want to become a devotee, these are the primary things we have to do. Even Pralat Mara says, Shravanam Kirtanam Smaranam. So Shravanam is hearing, Kirtanam is chanting and glorifying, and Kirtanam Smaranam is remembering Krishna. These are the primary activities of a sadhu. Yes, a sadhu will also give some time for other aspects as well. So the family life is there. We should give time to the family life to our children, to our relatives, but not at the cost of hearing, chanting and remembering. If our association with others is affecting all these three things, it is better to avoid that association. So the primary and priority which a person should take is to hearing, chanting and remembering Krishna. It's a wonderful process which, which is given by Srila Prabhupada. You have to chant, get up early in the morning, do the Mangalarati, do the 16 rounds, minimum 16 rounds. We should not stop at 16 rounds. We should do minimum 16 rounds. Do whatever regular activities which you do. In the Brahma Muhurta, he said, uh, His only Radhanath Swami Maharaj says, also His Grace Jhanath Mindavan says, one should complete the 16 rounds of chanting in one sitting in Brahma Murta. Yes, of course, it is not possible for certain people. But according to their own positions, they can do the chanting in one sitting. But it's ideal to do it in the Brahma Murta. Complete entire before 7.30, go to your regular activities. But this, this should be given prior hearing, chanting and remembering. They all regularly have a habit of Reading Srimad Bhagavad individually, Swadhyaya. The 11th chapter of the third, sorry, 11th canto of the third chapter says, one should have a Swadhyaya. One should have a minimum 30 minutes of reading of Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita daily, hearing from the Guru Maharaj. Then what happens? One does not suffer from the material misery. Such a material misery is, why are the material miseries coming? Because I am identifying with this body. We are identifying with the three modes of the material nature. That's why all the material miseries are coming. So we have three kinds of material miseries which are Adhyatmika, Adhibodhika, Adhidevika. Misery is caused by my, my own mind and body. My mind and body are the causes of my misery. Or the other living entity in the maybe a person or a mosquito or something is the cause of my misery. The third is 
the disturbances caused by the natural disasters like earthquakes, volcanoes, etc. These three are going to come in, in every month's life. So when we are hearing, chanting and remembering, we are free from these material miseries. See, just like, see the example of Ukraine. The Ukraine is completely bombarded. Everywhere we see people are being smashed by uh, bullets. But the devotees, they are even in that position, they are doing good distribution, they are giving the prashadam, they are having the kirtans. Why? Because they are having the hearing, chanting, and remembering. This happens only in the association with the devotee. If you are away from the association, these three cannot happen. That's why Kapiramuni instructs us to be in the association of a pure devotee who has all these qualities. So then in 24th sloka and 25th sloka, Kapiramuni has says we should associate with such sadhus to get the prema. So you can see the same as Bhagavatam 4.24.59. It says, simply by the association of pure devotee, one can understand the transcendental name, fame, quality, and activities of Supreme Personality of God. The Chaitanya Prabhu has repeatedly said this. So what are the stages of Bhakti? So we want, Bhakti means love. But today we don't have love for Krishna. The first stage is Shraddha. Shraddha means that I have some faith in this process. You should have some faith. Then it comes to Sadhu Sangha. So when we have sincere faith, we will get a good association where our faith is nourished. Then Sadhu Sangha means Vajana Kriya. Vajana Kriya to Anartha Nivruti. Anartha Nivruti is where we, we get our problems get rectified. Anarthas are removed. This is the biggest stage in the entire process. We do not know how long it will take. But instead, instead of focusing on all the anarthas like lust, anger, greed, pride, etc. Lust, anger, greed, pride, we, instead of focusing on all those things, we, we should focus on anartha nivruti. It can happen by chanting, hearing and remembering. So then only we can get an start. Steadiness. Initially, we don't have steadiness in the bhakti. Then we get Ruchi. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, Ruchi. So Ruchi develops into Asati, eagerness. Then we'll get the Bhava. The Krishna is Bhava Grahi Chanatana, the mood which we do service. Bhava comes at after Asati. Then ultimately, Bhava converts to Prema. <coughs> So Kapila Muni says, seek attachment to such attachment sadhus. Oh, oh my mother, oh virtuous lady, these are the qualities of a great devotee who are free from all attachments. You must seek attachment to such holy men. But this contrasts the previous effects of the material attachment. So if you if you can remember, if you go back to Canto 1, that may maybe fifth chapter of the Canto 1 where Narada explains to Vyasadeva how Narada has become the Narada. The so Narada was a maid servant, son of a maid servant in the previous life. What did he do? He is just a five-year-old boy. He rendered service to the sadhus, the Naimisharana. In, in in some I don't think the Naimisharana other forest. So he was he was having faith in the association of the pure devotees. Then he associated with the devotees. He took the remnants of the devotees. He served the devotees. And ultimately, when his mother has left the body, after Lakshadu said leaving, they left the place, her mother, his mother has left the body. Then what did the five-year-old boy do? He did not cry. Of course, he felt sad. And he immediately started focusing on Vishnu and got, went to the northern, northern places where he meditated on Vishnu. Then Bhakti, he could achieve from the pure devotional service and he has become Narada. So what has caused that Narada to become Narada? This unflinching faith and association of the devotees. You can see the devotees of Narada. So Vyasadeva, Brigari, all these people, they are all the pure devotees of pure devotees created by Narada Muni. Just by association of Narada Muni, they got benefited. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, 
सर्व सिद्धि लव मात साधु संग सर्व सिद्धि हो Fortunately, in our association, by the mercy of His Divine, by the mercy of His Grace, Lina and Prabhu, we can get, we are getting so many association of Brahmacharis and Sanyasis for two hours. In that two hours, we can have what one twelfth of a second to get the bhakti. So Krishna Kada is an association. In the association, so it is said in the twenty-four. Sorry, in the twenty-fourth one point, I have missed this. In the twenty-fourth uh, sloka, he says, "Prabhupada says, we don't that the sadhu doesn't get a material miseries. Even though the sadhu is in this material world, he does not get a material miseries. He has given a so Prabhupada has given a beautiful analogy of a cat, then and a rat. We all know this. So cat also cat carries its kitten in the through the mouth, but kitten is not afraid of the cat's mouth." But the same cat, when it catches the rat, the same mouth, the rat is terrified and dies because of the fear. This is for the rat and the kitten. This it is the same mouth, but kitten knows that my cat is not going to kill me because it is my mother. But rat is not like that. This fear, it is fear. This same this is the differentiation between the devotees and non-devotees. So, as a devotee, devotee feels that I am a kitten in the lap of my mother cat. So, this material world is not different from Krishna's energy. It's not going to affect me. But at the same time, devotee is always afraid of the death. Non-devotee is afraid of the death. That's why when he becomes old, he is very fearful. So, when we do this small bhakti, salpam arsi dharmasya trayato maho vaya. If you do small Service in this Krishna consciousness, the greatest danger of fear of death is lost. That is the potency of it. So one should therefore give up the association of the materialistic person and seek the association of person engaged in Krishna consciousness. And by such association, he will benefit in the spiritual advancement. This is what how he can progress in spiritual life. The twenty fifth sloka says, Kapilamuni says. In the association of the pure devotees, what are we going to do in the satsang? It is explained here. Discussion of the pastimes and activities of the supreme personality of Godhead is very pleasing and satisfying to the ear and the heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation, and thereafter is freed, and his attraction becomes fixed. Then real devotion begins. How does that devotion begin? In the association of the sadhu satsanga, we should always be eager to speak about Krishna, to hear about Krishna. So we have so many problems in our life. Yes, we can go and discuss in satsang, provided that problem is affecting your bhakti. If your problem is affected in your bhakti, then we can have that this problem discussed in satsang. Today, if I don't get promotion, I will be, be distressed that I should not give bring that problem to Satsang. Oh, Prabhu, please help me to get my promotion. I am not getting promotion in this in this office. Can I get a job in your company? It is not like that. Suppose you are facing a problem in your job which is affecting your bhakti. You can change the job. You can have discussion of that job in the satsang so that you can better progress in bhakti. Whatever thing we are discussing in, in satsang, it should have relevance for Krishna consciousness. Anukulena Krishna no One should do execute services which are favorable for Krishna consciousness. One should reject which is unfavorable for Krishna consciousness. That is what we have to do in the satsang. Instead of that, we have some. Then, in many sets, it's not only in our sets; there is in everywhere. Then, many of the people are discussing the private, only mundane topics in sets. If we don't progress in this material life, in life, one should have discussions only in Krishna Katha. That is very pleasing and satisfying, which gives actual ruchi of the chant. 
today we don't have chiefs for chanting because we are not associating properly in Sarasati, Bhava and Prema. Then inferior, there are inferior sadhu association can lift us up to Bhajana Kriya. Yes, they, the sadhus can increase our taste for chanting till such a certain extent. But Ruchi for Katha doesn't happen in the inferior association. That's why we should seek superior association. We should have association with the person who is progressing faster. We see so many devotees in our satsang. They are doing so many things, so many wonderful services. They are progressing very fast. Like Dinan Prabhu, Subhara Prabhu, Pravin Prabhu, and so many other things, other people, Lovis Prabhu, they are progressing very fast. So we should have association with such a devotee. Then our Asakti rises. In the excellent association, Katha, Anartha Nivruti happens. So when all our Anarthas go, we can have the direct association, direct realization of the Lord. Then our vista, our steadiness in bhakti starts, ruchi starts, asati develops, power develops. And then our actual mood starts coming out at that time. Till that time, we are in the sadhaka stage. One should be tolerant. We should all be as be tolerant. We should have faith that one day or the other, I am going to get the Krishna Prema. That's what we are saying every day. Krishna Prema Pradayata, we are doing so many things. But today, we don't get Krishna Prema. Yes, we have some Prema, but not complete. But we should have tolerance. We should have patience. Yes, I believe in this process, it is going to work. This happens only in the association of the pure devotee. To understand the personal activities of the Lord, one has to seek the association of the devotees. And by such association, when one contemplates, should have a contemplation, Dila Prabhupada says. Not only hearing the message, one should contemplate on what is being spoken. So, Jnana Karma, Janma Karma Chame Dibhyam Yogayati Tattvataha. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, fourth chapter. But how should I understand the past tense of Krishna? If you, do, if you don't hear from the satsang, don't contemplate on the message what we are hearing, we cannot get understanding of what are the activities of Krishna. Then our bhakti stops at that point. We cannot progress further. In the 26th sloka, in 26 and 27 sloka, Kapila Muni says, practice of jnana and yoga is not complete without bhakti. Jnana is giving result because there is some bhakti. Karma is giving result because there is some bhakti. That is what in 26th sloka and 27th sloka is said. Thus, consciously engage in the devotional service in the association of devotees. A person gains distaste for distraction and gratification, both in this world and in the next. By constantly thinking about the activities of the Lord, this process of Krishna consciousness is the easiest process of the mystic power. When one is actually situated on the path of devotional service, he is able to control the mind. Some people control every transcendentist, every sadhu, every devotee wants to control the mind. Without mind control, they cannot be a devotee. Devotee means mind, mind, mind control. Whether he is doing Ashtanga Yoga, Karma Yoga, all these yoga systems are only for the mind control, which we can see in, when Krishna explains to Arjuna in the chapter 6 of Bhagavad Gita. The process of Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, all those things. Similarly, Kapila Muni is giving the same instruction to Kapila uh, Devabhuti where being disgusted with sense gratification. The first and foremost thing is one should be disgusted. This material enjoyment is not the ultimate enjoyment. I am going to get distressed. So one should be distressed in this material world. Thinking about my activities. Second is we should think about the activities of Krishna. Krishna Kara is important. And endeavoring to control the mind. One should have a mind control. Even as sadhaka bhaktas, our mind today is not controlled. So we should have a control of the mind. When we are chanting, we can see it. When we are chanting, everything comes into our mind. Then how do I do the chanting? That's why one should chant in the Brahma Murta. Sorry, Brahma Murta moment. Early in the 4.30 to 5 o'clock, get up early in the morning, perform your Mangalarati. 
and start chanting. This is the ideal time where we can do the chanting. But if you keep the chanting at the last, later in the day, in the night time, the office tension, the all the daily court tension comes in the chanting. And our chanting gets disturbed. Our mind gets, doesn't get controlled. One will come to the correct path of yoga. Say yoga means gimmicks. It's not, yoga doesn't mean bodily exercises. Yes, bodily exercise is a part of yoga, but it's not yoga itself. Yoga means connection towards the Lord. So here, Kapila Muni is explaining about Bhakti Mishra Yoga. Ashtang Yoga mixed with Bhakti. Not complete Bhakti. That doesn't give you ultimate results. Yes, it takes us to the platform of Brahman. So what are the things, what are the stages which we can realize Krishna, Brahmeti, Paramatmeti, Bhagavaneti, Iti Shabhyate. Just like we know, all know that example of Tirupati. So when we reach Tirupati station, it's not Tirupati. When we go to the Tirupati hills, it's not complete Tirupati. But when we have the complete darshan of Lord Balaji, that is, gives the satisfaction. So this Astanga Yoga takes us to the platform of Brahman at Sat level. But it is not complete. Yes, it is correct process, but it is not a complete process. Then Kapila Muni elevates Devahuti's consciousness to Jnana, then practiced by Jnana, thus by not engaging in the service of the three modes of material nature, by, but developing Bhakti. So we should not engage in the three modes of material nature and develop Bhakti. Knowledge in renunciation. And practicing yoga, one achieves me. So, when we do this bhakti, automatically the renunciation comes. So, what is this renunciation? So renunciation means ren renunciation of the false ownership. I am the owner. I am the enjoyer. So, removal of the enjoyment mentality is in an actual renunciation in the knowledge. At that time, you, you can practice yoga. Still at this point of time, we have this knowledge and only. Some kind of bhakti is there, but we are predominantly on knowledge. I want more knowledge and knowledge and knowledge, knowledge seekers. So at that stage, it's called bhakti mishra jnana. So where we realize Krishna in the form of four-handed paramatma form. We can, we can see paramatma inside our heart. Till at that time, we are in the material world. Complete bhakti has not come. Sat chit. We are all sat chit ananda. We are looking for ananda. Ananda comes after, after knowing sat and chit. So when we are in ananda platform, sat and chit platform are already achieved. So when we do bhakti, Srila Prabhupada says, when you do bhakti, we are in the ananda platform. So when we are on the supreme blissful platform, automatically Sat and Chit is already gained. So, Jnana and Yoga is already done when we do Bhakti. So, it is, so Krishna Consciousness is the easiest process. So, among all the process, yes, Veda says so many process of elevation, they are also correct. But Bhakti alone is sufficient. This is the simplest process. Associate with the devotees, do your rounds, hear Krishna Kada or speak Krishna Kada, do some services, but do it in a humble manner. It is very simple process. In the next few, in the next three slokas, Devodhi further asks question. Hearing the excellence of bhakti as suitable for the Lord in the 19th sloka, Devodhi asks second question. What is she asking in the 28th and 29th is, on hearing this statement of the Lord, Devahuti inquired, what kind of devotional service is worth developing and practicing to help me easily? So what, this is a question. So in the 28th and 29th question, 29th sloka, Devahuti is asking the next three sloka, three questions. What kind of bhakti should I perform to easily attain your feet? So at this point, they would be understood that jnana and yoga are not completely fulfilling. Only you have to do bhakti. 
and she knows that bhakti means navavita bhakti and in that navavita bhakti she is asking what kind of bhakti should i perform to easily attain we all we all have this mentality right so we create comforts it's natural to create comforts it's okay to create comforts but it should be in an authorized way she is asking to the authority so what is the easiest method so that of bhakti so that i can attend you that is answered in 31st to 34th shloka by katila muni in the question 3 is explain the gyana by which one understands your tattva how can i understand vishnu tattva krishna tattva that is explained in the next chapters 26 to 27 in the question 4 explain the yoga aimed at the liberation so she is also, devoti is also so merciful that she is first giving the devotional service she is asking about bhakti first the tatya shloka she says my intelligence is not great so being a woman my intelligence is not so great today in the sekali yuga we are all like women we are not, no there is no male and female we are all part of prakriti we are all unintelligent people our intelligence is very low if devahuti is asking saying that i want to learn about bhakti give me the easiest process the same process is easily applicable to all of we should not think that it is applicable only to devahuti standard i am a very elevated soul i am a male person no the same thing which kapila muni is giving to devahuti is 100 and 100 percent applicable to all of us in 31st to 44th shloka lord kapila answers to question 2 as one engages in uncontaminated bhakti we are engaging in uncontaminated bhakti various symptoms of spiritual advancement begin to manifest within the practitioner we can see so many symptoms interestingly devotion is so valuable that practitioner no any yoga system requires some element of bhakti even if you follow gyana yoga karma yoga ashtanga yoga or any karma kanda without any devotion even slight trace of devotion that is that is not going to happen in our material life we are trying to do some things but you don't get result out of it yes you can say this karma one is it is in your karma it is not there to get the positive result second is in that action in that activity we don't have bhakti don't have bhakti you don't have faith in the lord that's why in our indian culture whatever activity which you are doing it is started with a devotional prayers but at that time the results will be successful you can see in every aspect if there is bhakti will get the result there is no bhakti there is no result is incorporated in order to achieve their respective goals that's why krish kapila muni explains about sankhya philosophy knowing his mother's purpose or kapila compassionately described about sankhya bhakti and yoga why he is compassionate naturally he is a supreme personality of god he is merciful second he is assuming the role of a son of devahuti just like a son is compassionate towards his parents kapila muni is also compassionate towards his mother because out of that compassion he has explained about sankhya bhakti and yoga her mother's purpose was very bona fide authentic that's why even kapila muni has satisfied satisfied in 30 second shloka he says bhakti performed without many material desires anya bilashita shunyam gyana karmaadi anavrutam anukulena krishna anusilam bhakti uttamam ter rupa goswami in the natav devotion says this this bhakti should be unalloyed with gyana and karma so here shila prabhupada says sorry in the kapila muni says in that part in the translation that senses are the representative of the daily parts why because each and every sense is controlled by a daily god just like this eyelid is com- is controlled by a devata called nimi but each and every action 
we are dependent on the demigods. That's why senses are a representative of demigods. And the master of the senses is the mind. Mind is the master of all senses. The master of all the demigods is Bhagavan Sri Krishna. So mind should be as a representative of Krishna. Kapilamuni is saying this. So that's, if mind is a representative of Krishna, mind should be engaged in the Krishna study. And then it's the mind's natural duty is to serve the Supreme Sense. It is a, it's a service attitude. It should render service to Supreme Personality God. Senses that serve the Supreme Lord, mind that is exclusively dedicated to the Lord or in a spontaneous level is called Lord. Majahure Mana Sri Nanda Nandana. Engage our mind in the Krishna consciousness. Engage our senses in the Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada gives an example of Ambarish Maharaj. How he engaged all his senses. That he was with. That's why. So when Vasamuni uh, came and tried to kill Ambarish Maharaj because of small offense, Ambarish Maharaj was not disturbed by that. Instead, Ambarish Sari. Durvasamuni was running after and the Sudarshan Chakra came to uh, Durvasamuni to kill him. And Durvasa was running here and there. He went to Vaikuntha, to Vishnu, to prefer protection. What did Vishnu say? I cannot protect you. You get protection only when you take the shelter of my devotee. So one should have that healthy respect towards the devotee. So we should, when we have when we engage our senses in the devotional service, there is our material misery does an effect all of us. Such bhakti, what is the glory of such bhakti? Such bhakti quickly destroys the subtle body. So here Prabhupada gives a beautiful analogy of digestive fire comes in the food. So we all have digestive system. So when we put fire food, the digestive system burns that food. Sometimes we see so people who can eat more till they are able to digest. How are they going to digest? Because of the jakaragi, the digestive fire inside, digestive enzymes inside. Just like these digestive enzymes is, uh, destroys the food particles, this bhakti destroys the subtle body. So what is the subtle body composed of? Mind, intelligence and false ego. When that false ego is shattered and the false ego is lost, then actual soul consciousness comes. Jivera Sarupai, Krishna Das comes from. So this is the bhakti is the easiest process and quick process. So that's why devotee is always after bhakti, not after bhakti. You can see the case of Lava Mangal Thakur. He says, when I execute bhakti, Mukti or Moksha is my servant standing outside. The devotees doesn't go after Moksha. They go for Bhakti. In 34th Sloka to 38th Sloka, Kapila Muni explains about Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti and Raghanuga Bhakti. So we have seen, right, in the nine stages of devotional service, the Bhava says has two different components. Bhava has two different components. Nectar of devotion says that. One component is Vaidhi Bhakti, the other component is Raghanuga Bhakti. What is this Vaidhi Bhakti and Raghanuga Bhakti? Vaidhi Bhakti means Bhakti followed because of the rules and regulations. So just like when we are new in the friendship, when their friendship is new, we follow certain protocols. When a, when a person is married, the husband and wife have certain protocols. They, they have love, but they cannot their love easily. There are certain rules and regulations. So when that stage is crossed, there is a spontaneous love. It's natural we, we see in this material world. In same way, in the relation with the Krishna, initially it is a formal with rules and regulations. What are those rules and regulations? Following the four regulative principles, waking early in the morning, attending for Mangala Arati, and doing your uh, sa sadhana doing a chanting of 16 rounds minimum and reading the same as Bhagavatam. These are all things are compulsory. Not, not, not anything of this is optional. 
these are rules and regulations which you have to do whether you really like it or not like it that is vaidhi bhakti what happens after doing this vaidhi bhakti this by rules and regulations we come to a stage automatically the love starts coming out there is spontaneous love there is always a spontaneous love by hearing the krishna name you will get that ecstatic feelings that is what he explained in 34th shloka devotee never desires impersonal liberation the devotee doesn't like impersonal sayujya sarupya samipya all those things always engages in the service of my lotus feet he is always after the lotus feet glorifies my activities in the association of the devotees this is vaidhi bhakti in 35th shloka kapila says the devotee always sees my attractive smiling face with red eyes is my various benevolent transcendental forms different different forms narsimha rama all the things as benevolent transcendental forms then he talks favorably with me just like we has i shared some one video by person ex, ex converging with krishna's murti so then we see at this point it is not idol what we are putting in the, in the temples is not idol worship mayavada says is actually the dt worship dt means presence of krishna today we cannot see krishna directly we can see krishna in the material form that is the dt worship then we can talk favorably to the thing. then bhakti gives liberation this moksha without any special endeavor we don't need to do extra things liberation is already guaranteed while they don't desire higher planets astasiddhis or even the kingdom of god they attain all benedictions in this life so all the gyana in yoga gyana astanga all those things gives us higher planetary systems astasiddhis anima lagima all those things we see in the case of hanuman he can become small big fly etc but what is his natural position his natural position is sada ragupati ke dasa so when we become das of the ragupati or the devotees we will get naturally we will get all these heavenly planets already guaranteed no need of special endeavor but a devotee is not after that heavenly planets and ecstasy he is always eternally seeking for the service of the lord they are not deprived of any opulence or affected by time Because why we are they are not why devotees are not affected by time because they are transcendental to this material world they are already in the vaikuntha planet at the vaikuntha planet there is no influence of time at all there is no birth death old age and disease so when we do this bhakti when we get the spontaneous bhakti there is no effect of time on the on the devotee because they accept the lord as their lover son different kind of rasas is we have five primary rasas and seven secondary rasas in one of these mellows we can get the association of in 39th to 40th shloka the vaidhi sadhana bhakti is explained out so why 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 this sadhana bhakti so giving up all attachments of this material world and the next the devotee exclusively worships me and thus i take them to beyond the birth and death so here there is on there is an example of a, a poor person there is a poor person visiting a king's palace at that time king was on the day king was giving gifts to all the people who comes to his palace that is the duty which king is doing so naturally everyone is coming taking some money some gold jewelry clothes etc but this poor brahman has come there to the king and he said king oh king what i want is i want to have friendship with you i want you as your friend all the people started laughing instead of asking for wealth he is asking for friendship what did the king do king said to stand here i will see to you after i finish all this my activities so he king does all the activities gives a uh, gifts to all the people then king calls this person and says now tell me what you want 
that's the same, he says the same thing. I want your friendship. So the king says, so be it. I will be your friend. So king is very uh, uh, particular about his word. When he says he wants to become a friend, he is really at a friendly platform. So whenever the Brahman comes to the palace, he used to eat in the royal palace, royal place. Because when a friend comes to us, we will give naturally what plate we are eating. The same level. So when the king visited out of friendship to a, the uh, Brahman's place, roads are coming, the entire area is pretty clean, which we can see in this material. When a politician comes to our, our town or place, everything gets ready. The roads get ready. Isn't it? So naturally, when he became friend of the king, when friend of that king, he is sharing the opulences of the king. So why the bhakti brings us to, uh, to the platform of Raganuga Bhakti, where we are seeking, Oh Krishna, you become my friend. When we are friend of Krishna, naturally we share the resources of Krishna. Krishna doesn't come alone. Krishna comes with all the entourage. He comes with Vrindavan, he comes with devotees, he comes with gopis, he comes with Gopavalika, Gopas. So when we are friend of Krishna, we can naturally get the opulence of the Krishna. That is the beauty of Vaidana Bhakti, Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. It gives us, it takes us to Sadhana Bhakti, Raganuga Bhakti. Then the fear of the material world is lost. It cannot be overcome by any means by except by devotion to me, as Lord Krishna, Rama and Purushadha. We are so much fearful today. Fear of Corona, fear of death, fear of losing something. Right? The fear gets lost only when we explode. There is no other way. Without Bhakti, we can, our fear doesn't go. Only out of fear of me, the wind blows, the sun shines, Indra pours rain, fire burns, and death flees. In Ramaraksha Sotra, it is said, Varjanam Bhava Bijana Arjanam Yama Arjanam Sukasam Padam Tarjanam Yamadhutana Tam Rameti the Garjanam. So when we thunderously roar Rama's name, Krishna's name, what happens? Yamadhuta starts fleeing. They, they don't come. We can see in the example of Ajamil. Ajamil unknowingly chanted the name of Lord Narayana. Then Vishnu Dadas came, given a second chance. Similarly, because everyone is fearful of Krishna. So, wind blows, sun shines, Indra pours, fire burns. But there is one thing Krishna fears. Krishna fears the love of Krishna. Krishna acts as, a, as if he is fearful of Yashoda, Radharani. You can see in the, the example in the past time of Damodar Lila. When we take the shelter of devotees, Krishna naturally becomes closer to Allah. We cannot directly approach Krishna. That's why we say Hare Krishna. We require Hare before Krishna. We require Radha Rani before Krishna. We require Yashoda Krishna, Yashoda Nandana, Nanda Nandana, we say it. We cannot approach Krishna directly. We should approach Krishna through his because it's my shelter is the my shelter is for protection. Sarva Dharman Parijana. So when we take shelter of Krishna, naturally that he will protect all of us. He says in the Bhagavad Gita, I will protect what they are, what they have, and I give what they lack. What is Krishna going to protect? Krishna is going to protect the feet. The faith is the so much important. Bhagavad Gita, we hear about faith in different modes, different uh, methodologies. In progress. So the, the faith is not protects us. The protection is the faith. Faith in the process. The yogis take shelter of my lotus feet by bhakti equipped with jnana and vairagya for the highest perfection. Entering into the kingdom of God, there is no fear. The last sloka in the sloka, Kapila Muni says, one should do Tivra Bhakti, intense Bhakti. What is intense Bhakti? As Rupa Goswami says in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, one Jnana Karmadi Anavritam, 
one should have do bhakti without material interest. Only I am doing bhakti because of this that I want to please him and his devotees. Not do bhakti so that expecting something. Savayi Pusham Paro Dharma Ketho Bhakti Ahoy Tukri Aparthihata Kayatma Suprasenjati Without any motivation, without any interruption. The, when you do, you remove the jnana, material knowledge, material uh, measure, material uh, things, then that is called complete bhakti. We do that, but that is called tivra. That tivra bhakti takes us to the stage of prema. It gives us prema for Krishna, prema for Rahayate. That can happen only in the association of a first class and say first class devotees. That's why when we want to progress in spiritual life, we all should take the help of spiritual master. Without the spiritual master, Bhagavad Gita also says the important quality which a devotee should have is two things. One is faith in the Krishna consciousness, and second is surrender to the pure devotee guru. Without these two, we are not going to progress in the spiritual life. At this point, thus ends the Bhakti Vedanta purpose of the third canto, the 25th chapter of Srimad Bhagavata, entitled The Glories of Devotional Service. Second, third question and fourth question is elaborately explained in coming chapters 26 to 33rd chapter, where Kapilamuni explains about jnana and yoga. Thank you so much. Now I have opened this forum for your realization questions. Hare Krishna Giddhas Prabhu Pratana. Avari Prabhuji. Santosha Aditya Prabhu Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai 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 Srila Prabhupada Ki Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Very nice Prabhuji presentation. You covered each verse. Thus, uh, this chapter itself is, you know, the glories of devotion service. So wonderfully explained Prabhuji. So this material world, just want to share, maybe you covered, uh, uh, this material world is basically under the three modes of material nature, it is working. Mode of passion, mode of ignorance, mode of ignorance, mode of passion, mode of goodness. So 14.26, I think you covered, right? Yes. Mamchi or vichare na bhakti yoga na sevate, sagunan samati tetan brahma puyaya kalpate. Mamchi or vichare na bhakti yoga na sevate. Without the bhakti, we cannot cross over this material nature. Um, and that too, surrender to a guru and learn from him. Then we give the knowledge, apply in our life and then practice. And these are the past times, wonderful past times. Actually, every day we have to do this kind of, this nourishes our bhakti. You know, these are the great personalities teachings. Mm, right? So, and, uh, your presentation, so nice, Prabhuji. I, I love it. Uh, please share. Okay. That's my request. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for taking two days and uh, finishing the 25th chapter, which is very important. And uh, then I'll pronounce to you for uh, <clears throat> helping us do this uh, Bhagavatam. Thank you. Dhanavad Pranam Prabhuji for, uh, for instructing me to take this session. Thank you for much, so much. All because of the senior devotees, all of you, all of you here. It's only possible. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you so much. So I think we can end this session today. I think some many of many of you are having the Offices right now, already 8 40. So we'll end the session here. Poncha Kalabada Rupa Sakripas and the Bevacha Bakantana, Pamego, Vaisna, Pamela, and the Koti Price of the Key Jay. Passenger will see him at Hagwatam Key Jay. 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 Jay.